super, super hard, when it comes into a collision, it's going to crack and it's going to break. And it's the same thing as those friends. When they get into a heated, when they get into any type of disagreement, they get into any type of frustration or anything like that, they explode because they don't know how to deal with it. YouTube and welcome back to my channel spoon the biology it's your girl TK and I hope y'all are excited for another video in our bones series so today we're gonna be like I said adding another video to our bone series and jumping into all things bone development but before we get into that make sure you go ahead and like comment and subscribe to the channel go ahead and share this video so that all of your friends know we're out here spilling the tea together girl and go ahead and make sure you hit that post notification bell so you know every time I'm uploading and you never miss any content so that you can get your study on with me. So, before we jump into this though, we do want to make sure our energies are clear. As I'm burning this, go ahead and set your intention. Just take three nice, mindful deep breaths. and get this kid a lot so today like i said we're going to be covering bone development and a large part of how that works so um we're going to be covering bone ossification which is development bone resorption which is the taking back or um or cutting down of bone tissue and we'll be talking about the two different types of ossification intermembranous versus interchondral so we're going to just jump into that content for today and kind of go over all of things related to our bone development today. So before we jump straight into the content of what the bone development looks like, we're first gonna jump into our vocab. So the first thing that we're gonna hit are a few words that you might be familiar with for some of our previous lectures and from of our previous things or from content you're covering in class. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is a mesenchymal cell, which we talked about in the last video. Mesenchymal cells are our stem cells that eventually lead to the development of our bone tissue. Then we have chondrocytes. Chondrocytes are similar to the cells that we talked about in our last video, osteocytes. But if you remember, when we in our first video in this series, we talked about the prefix chondro. Then we talked about how chondro is related to cartilage. And then we in the last video, we talked about an osteocyte. So if that kind of gives you an idea of putting those two, um, that prefix and that suffix together, we'll see if you can get an idea of what a chondro site is. So I'm gonna leave that one right there and we'll go over the definition of that once we get to that in our story. Um, then we have osteoprogenitor cells. If you remember the prefix osteo that we talked about um, previously in our videos, osteo. Um, osteoprogenitor cells are going to be related to that beginning cell. So they're gonna be what we refer to as our pre-differentiated cells. And you should know what osteo means, so that should tell you what type of tissue that we're talking about when we talk about pre-differentiation. And then we have our osteoblast cells, osteoclast cells, and osteocytes, which I'm going to just leave here. Um, and you should be able to tell me what those words mean. So I'll leave a little pause in here so you can just marinate on what exactly those words mean um, before you jump right into the content. And if you don't, make sure that you hit my video that I'm linking up in the cards, which is all about the bone cells and their functions, which we covered last week. So make sure you go ahead and hit on that video. If you all right, so now that we've gotten our vocab out of the way and some more vocab, obviously will come up as we go on as it always does. And we'll hit on those things as they come up, but well, let's go ahead and sip on us some tea. Okay. Let's go ahead and take us a good little, good little sip. Okay, so remember last time I told you that I have a friend named Jay who always has my back, and that's what the bones are. They're a friend that always has your back. Well, we all typically have, those friends that have your back typically can go one of two ways, and they're typically raised in very, 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 very similar fashions. So that's kind of what we're going to use 
as the basis for the story to help us remember the difference between intermembranous and interconjural ossification. Before we jump into that, I just want to give you a quick definition of ossification. Ossification is better known as bone deposition or the formation of bone. And we know what cells typically related to the building of bone, formation of bone, development of bone. I'll give you a second. Yep, it's our osteoblast. So when we're talking ossification, you can go ahead and think ossification, osteoblast. And when we think resorption, resorption is the other word we'll be talking about today. That is the cutting of bones or um, the deposition. No, not deposition. I'm sorry. Wrong word. Or the um, when we, you know, take away bone tissue, get rid of bone tissue. That is resorption. So you can think resorption, osteoclast, which I think I went over in the last video. But just to reiterate the point. So back to our, what we were talking about. So. Bones are typically our friends that have our back no matter what and always standing by our side. So, like I said, you have two different ways that these friends are typically developed and there's two different, slightly different ways by which these friends kind of operate. So, I kind of have an example. I told y'all last week about my friend named Jade, who I'm still cool with, still is there with me, you know, has my back no matter what. I would say she's more like our in the, um, in the chondral ossification, which we'll hit in a moment. Um, but I also have a friend that I had back in the day that would have my that would have my back, but she was a little bit more she was a little bit more violent. Yeah, she she just had a little bit a, a few more issues with controlling her temper with particular situations. And let's say let's call this friend um, we got Jade, and let's go with um, I don't know. Jessica. Jade and Jessica. Works for me. So, um, the difference between these two friends. So, Jade is the type of friend that she was raised in a, in a household where she had a good role model. She had somebody that she can lean on and somebody to ask questions to and things like that to help her kind of navigate life and figure things out. While Jessica was more of my friend that she didn't really have a role model. Her parents were very busy, they worked multiple jobs, and it was very difficult for them to really be supportive and there for her emotionally, mentally, in every way she needed. So these two different types of upbringings leads to developing two very different types of friends. And I'm going to use these two different upbringings to help you understand the difference between intermembranous and interconjural ossification. So let's start with intermembranous. So intermembranous is that friend that doesn't have a role model. So how does intermembranous ossification work? So intermembranous ossification, remember that we're talking about intermembranous ossification is related to that of our short bones typically. Related to those short bones or our flat bones, those bones that don't really have those two ends like our long bones have. So these are more or less like the bones in your feet, the bones in your hands, the bones in your skull that we're talking about when we talk about intermembranous ossification. So intermembranous ossification starts out with mesenchymal cells, which if you remember mesenchymal cells are our stem cells. So mesenchymal cells, they come to an area and they cluster to form what we call an ossification center. I just told you ossification is related to bone deposition. So the ossification center is where the deposition starts. So we have our mesenchymal cells and they become osteoprogenitor cells and then straight into osteoblasts. There's not really any in between. They go straight into our baby bone cells. So you get mesenchymal cells that transition into osteoprogenitor cells and then osteoprogenitor cells that go straight into osteoblasts. So the way I like to think about ossification centers is like kind of like a place where you learn a lot of stuff. So I think of ossification centers, that primary ossification center, the first ossification center you ever made, whether it's endochondrial or um, intramembranous, is like your household. It's where you learn majority of your lessons. It's that place where you develop, grow, and kind of multiply and become your own person. So when you start to get those beginning pieces of, of your personality and who you want to be. So that's where we kind of started with Jessica. She has her household, but remember, like I said, her household doesn't really have 
anybody that's really there to guide her. It's not, there, there aren't too many people there because everybody's really busy just trying to make sure that they can make ends meet and just survive. And I know many of you can probably identify with that. So this is probably the house, the, a similar background to what you grew up in, a family, a household where mom or dad was constantly busy just trying to make sure that they can keep food on the table, lights on, and somewhere for you to sleep at night. They weren't really thinking about every single emotional issue you were having or making sure that you were mentally there in some ways. So it led to you teaching yourself and not really having a role model for all the things that you felt like you needed a role model for. So that's that first step when we're in the household. And then after the mesenchymal cells in the household are at the ossification center, develop into osteoprogenitor cells and then become osteoblasts, they start laying down that matrix right and start getting calcified and getting hard so these are those relationships that that person goes through or that friend grows through that nobody because nobody has really taught them how to deal with their emotions how to deal with um how to deal with their mental how to deal with processing and relationships generally they've never seen anything that's healthy these relationships are just beating them up they're just making them tough they're constantly struggling they're constantly getting their heart broken constantly getting cheated on constantly getting lied to it's just they're constantly getting beat up and they don't know why they're attracting this energy over and over and over and over again. They don't realize this because they weren't taught how to process their own emotions, how to process their own mental, how to process anything. So they just become a really, really hard bone, a really, really, or a really, really hard person. And if you know a friend like this, and you, you probably know they're typically hard to get to, they were probably a hard friend for you to gain in the first place. That's kind of like the idea of the calcification, those tough relationships, those tough, those hardships, those things that really give you that, that hard shell on the outside. So that's why we lay down that calcification, that extracellular matrix, and those osteocytes are formed from those osteoblasts that are laying down that matrix. So once we have that to happen, resorption occurs. So resorption in this case is, is occurring so that your bones can get a little bit of give, so that they aren't super 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 hard because if a bone is super 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 hard when it comes into a collision it's going to crack and it's going to break and it's the same thing as those friends when they get into a heated when they get into any type of disagreement they get into any type of frustration or anything like that they explode because they don't know how to deal with it they don't know how to they don't know how to process it because nobody has ever taught them how to process but that's why we have the cutters that's why we have those relationships that kind of cut you but don't cut you in a way that make you feel terrible they cut you I mean, they cut you in a way that allow for you to see lessons and they allow for you to see the way that you were handling things, that you could handle it a little bit better, that you were approaching situations might not be the smartest way to approach a situation and allowing you to see that maybe not every, every situation that you're going into, you might actually be putting yourself right into those shoes and might not even realize that you're doing it to yourself. So there are those friends that allow for you to see the lessons and realizations that you need to see to grow. That's what your cutters are. They're not, they're not necessarily cutting you in a bad way, but they're cutting you in a way for you to see that it's okay for you to be a little bit soft. It's okay for you to have a little bit of give. And that's what your osteoclasts are doing at this point. In this point, your osteoclasts are coming in and forming what we call trabeculae. And the trabeculae is what comes in and gives your bone a little bit of give. It makes it so that the bone doesn't immediately crack once it's hit on anything. It doesn't immediately just fall into a million bajillion pieces because it's super brittle. It allows for it to have a little bit of give, allow for a little bit of compression, some tensile strength. It just allows for it to be able to move and not be super stiff and break immediately once anything touches it or hits it. Those are the three steps that we use to make bones by way of intermembranous ossification. We have an ossification center formed by those mesenchymal cells coming together and clustering together to form osteoprogenitor cells that then develop into osteoblasts. Those osteoblasts lay down the extracellular matrix that allows for calcification to occur and then the osteoclasts which are stimulated by osteoblasts to come into the area and form that trabeculate so that you can have a little bit of give and a little bit of um and a little bit of reprieve so that it isn't super brittle so that's how intramembranous ossification works so that is your friend that doesn't have a model doesn't really have a role model to show her how to become or doesn't really have a role model to show him or her how to become that soft human being that has a balance of self-care and also, you know, boundaries and being tough, but kind of learns it by the relationships they build and coming across different people. They won't end up as soft, or not necessarily as soft, but as understanding always as the person that goes through an endochondrial process 
but they do end up learning a lot of those same things and seeing that there needs to be a balance of soft and hard. Now we're going into interchondral observation. So interchondral is when your friend has that has a role model. So basically, what happens with interchondral ossification is that we have a model that is formed, a model that is made. So we start out with our mesenchymal cells coming together and clustering the same way that they did in intramembranous. The difference here is that instead of differentiating into osteoprogenitor cells like they did before, they differentiate into chondroblasts. Chondroblasts, chondro means what? Cartilage, yes. So they develop into cartilage. So here in interchondral ossification, interchondral tells you that you're gonna have cartilage involved. So you have the cartilage model that is made by those chondroblasts. So those chondroblasts are developed from the mesenchymal cells. Those chondroblasts lay down the matrix and make chondrocytes very similarly to osteoblasts developing into osteocytes. So it lays down that matrix to make the chondrocytes and those chondrocytes make that model so that the bones know where to lay down. So this is the, sim the idea that you have a role model. You had a parent that was there in the household able to teach you those lessons and guide you through and had a little bit more time to just spend time with you, making sure that your mental, your emotional, everything was in place so that you are ready to take on the world. So that's what that cartilage model is. So those cartilage sites, those chondrocytes, like I told you in the previous video, chondrocytes grow by way of Yes, hypertrophy. So as these chondrocytes are increasing in size, this increase in size is what stimulates the osteoblasts to come to the area. It says, hey, 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 this cartilage is getting big. We don't need cartilage, sis. We need bone. So I need you to come on. So that's exactly what happens. That, that model basically sends that kid off to go get a model from somewhere else. To go get to, to go get some some insight from somewhere else. So when I think of this, I kind of think of it as my childhood, and how my mom was a great role model for me. She gave me a, a lot of insight, but then she then sent me off to the South Carolina Governor's School for Science and Mathematics, and she sent me off there, and that was kind of like my first ossification center, the first place where I was able to develop and learn some things for myself and really and really get to know me and who I want and who I was and who I wanted to be without the guidance of my mother, though I loved her. And still love her that she's my bestie but sometimes you need to do a little bit of growth outside of your mother and that's what that going to governor school allowed for me to do it allowed for me to grow and develop into my who I, who I wanted to be and kind of get the beginnings of that person of who I want to be so that's kind of what I would view as my first ossification center so you can kind of view that as going off to a boarding high school so that first ossification center those osteoblasts got stimulated by the growth in the chondrocytes stimulate those osteoblasts to come to the area and start to develop an ossification center. The first ossification center that's developed in the long bone happens in the diaphysis. It happens in the middle. So you form this and you form it from the inside out. So you form these very inner pieces and then you start building out. And those osteoblasts, once you form this, those osteoblasts come out to the surface like we said, it sit right underneath that periosteum, like we said in that second video about the anatomy of the bone, to wait for more bone tissue for the stimulation of, um, of that osteoblast to stimulate more bone tissue to be made. So, like I said, the osteoblast comes to the area when those chondrocytes start to increase in size. So once the osteoblasts come to the area, they start laying down the extracellular matrix because it wants to stimulate the stopping of the growth of the chondrocyte because the bone can't form if the chondrocyte is continuing to grow. So you want to lay down bone matrix because when you lay down bone matrix, the calcium, it kills the chondrocyte. So you're laying down the bone matrix to kill the chondrocyte. So you get those osteoblasts that come to the area, lays down the bone matrix, kills the chondrocyte, and now we're starting the development of the diaphysis. Osteocalcin is what stimulates the osteoblasts to come to the area. It's like, hey, 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 come on, come on, come on. And that's secreted by chondrocytes as they die. Osteocalcin is secreted by chondrocytes as they die to stimulate more osteoblasts to come to the area. What actually sticks the extracellular matrix together is called 
um osteonectin so nectar is sticky when i think of nectar i think of something sticky because i think of start to think about honey and bees and stuff like that so osteonectin is what sticks the osteoid together osteocalcin is what stimulates the it's like a call calcin call you see how it's spelled too is a healthy kind of remember the call and it's calling the osteoblast to the area so once the matrix is made and we've secreted um the osteocalcin to get more osteoblasts to come to the area once that occurs we go from making the diaphysis once the diaphysis is made we get um osteoclasts to travel down the osteoblasts then start to secrete the ncsf to stimulate osteoclasts to come to this area osteoclasts are coming to this area to create the medullary cavity so they're coming down and they're going to the middle of this bone and they're going to the center, the first, they're going to those beginning bone, that beginning bone tissue that was made. Because if you remember, I just said the bone tissue grows from the inside out. So the osteoclasts are going to go to that first bone tissue that is made and starts breaking it down so that you can form the medullary cavity. That way, the bone marrow and stuff like that can get into that so you can start making your bone tissue and your, um, and the different things that you need there. So it starts making that medullary cavity. And as that happens, osteoblasts start to travel down to the ends. Okay, so osteoblasts travel here and travel here. And this is where the secondary ossification centers are made. So the secondary, the primary ossification center made in the diaphysis. Secondary ossification centers are made in the epiphysis. And these ossification centers start in the center of the epiphysis. So it's going to start in the middle here, in the middle here and then it grows outward to eventually fill up this whole place but it's going to stop right where that epiphyseal plate should be so it's going to fill up fill up fill up and then stop right around here where the epiphyseal plate should be and it's also going to leave a little bit of that cartilage on the outside the cartilage that was left on the outside becomes the articular cartilage so so the chondrocytes or the osteoblasts are in the inside Multiply, 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 make osteocytes, osteocytes, and it keeps growing until it leaves a thin layer of cartilage on the outside and a thin line of cartilage on the inside. That thin line on the inside is the epiphyseal plate. The thin, thin covering on the outside is the articular cartilage. This epiphyseal plate eventually is going to fill in as you get older and you grow. That is what allows you to get taller with time, is that these chondrocytes eventually start, you know, growing and they grow by way of hypertrophy. So they start growing in size and then that stimulates osteoblasts to come to the area and replace them so that you can grow in height. So it works the same way. Once the, once the chondroblasts start growing, then that's when that stimulates your growth to happen. Um, but yeah, that's how the epiphyseal plate works. So yeah. That is those two forms of ossification that occurs. That's your intramembranous and your intrachondral ossification. Intramembranous, you just form a sheet, no model. It's like my friend Jessica. She didn't have no role model, not by a fault of her own, but just because, you know, her parents were busy, didn't have a lot of time to pour into a child. So she didn't learn a lot. So she had to learn a lot as she went and gain insight from the relationships and the things around her versus endochondrial there's a model there that teaches you a lot of stuff shows the bones and the tissues and things of where to go how to place it how to be successful and then that is what allows them to be the person they are not one person better than the other not one bone better than the other just made in ever so slightly different ways to allow for that bone to be the bone that needs to be and be able to do the function it needs to do so yeah that's how ossification that's how bones are developed um, and that's pretty much our whole bones unit. We'll go into more, we might go more into detail with bone related things if you ask me questions about different diseases and stuff like that in the comments down below. So if you want me to go over more bone related content or anything, um, we'll come back to muscles later on and complete this and then call it the MSK unit. But for right now, this is our bones unit. And this is pretty much all the content I have for it. So like I said, if there are more things you want me to cover related to bones, please make sure you put those comments and those questions down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get to them. And if it requires enough detail, I might even put a video together for it. So with that being said, I hope you look, enjoyed our bones unit and look forward to our next unit. Like I said in the beginning, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that post notification bell and share this video so all of your friends can be spilling the bottle of tea right with us. So with that being said, I hope y'all have a great night, positive vibes and everything to you. And I'll see you in the next one.